Good afternoon. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Um, today I want to talk a bit how our world is changing. Eh? Because we live in a world which is sort of shifting from analog to digital. In a world where technology is playing this huge part um, of how we see reality, how we connect with each other, how we communicate. Eh? In a way, more and more, it's not something hidden inside um, a, a robot or a microchip or a laptop. No, 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 it's more and more tech, is more and more sort of uh, extension of our skin, a sort of second language. And I think that's sort of fascinating. And how do you operate as an artist or as a designer within this new world? And what happens when this social media, eh, the social technologies, a la Facebook, a la Hives, a la LinkedIn, jumps out of the computer screen and becomes a part of our landscapes, of our bodies? Well, basically, that's sort of the questions that I ask myself as, as, as an artist slash architect slash designer slash inventor slash uh, storyteller slash uh, poetry uh, imaginary, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, uh, uh, and uh, you have this fascination, you have an obsession, and then you start to get to work. And so I believe in this new world. Huh? Um, uh, I believe that we will be submerged with technology, but I also think there's a beauty in it and there's a bullshit in it, there's a horror in it, there's a poetry in it, and let's sort of focus on, on the poetry, on the techno-poetry side in that. Um, one of the first pieces that we made as a design studio eh, based in Rotterdam and in Shanghai um, is this piece called June, actually sort of ex uh, literally merging nature and technology within a new landscape here placed in a pedestrian tunnel in Rotterdam, the Maas Tunnel under the river, where the city invited us to basically, uh, well, that was not particularly the briefing, but we sort of gave that interpretation to it, to sort of update people's perception of what reality could be. And here you see it, here you see it placed in the tunnel, people on their way to work. So June consists out of hundreds of little LEDs and microchips and sensors, so the light follows you where you walk. <laughs> and sort of June has a mind of its own, so sometimes it's quite hectic here of all the sounds of the little kids, but then slowly it's becoming more quiet. Um, um, so it's a mirror reacting to what you're doing, but it's also um, uh, an, an, uh, you know, a mediator trying to connect between people. And I like that, 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 that it has a mind of its own, it tries to trigger you. And I think the highest form is when it becomes intuitive, sort of that people realize like, hey, it's not a static thing, eh? um, but we can sort of play and interact with it. Our world is not static, but we can uh, become a part of it. And it's sort of fascinating to place these kind of things within, not in just in the white cube, eh, in a nice museum space, but in a public area where people literally can touch it. Eh? When we give exhibitions in Tate Modern or Victoria and Albert Museum or here in Garage even in Moscow, uh, the curators always come uh, sort of eh, with the little signs, do not touch. And then we say, no, you have to touch, you know, please go away. So that's always sort of struggle. And well, in public space you have different struggles, but so people touch it and this is part of the, of the interactivity. And what does these kind of artworks generate? I think that's sort of interesting. Well, here you see wedding couples coming uh, to June. Um, June became this weird hotspot for couples to have their wedding photos taken. We didn't know that, but it was this top three uh, list for several months. So suddenly this old dark tunnel is invaded by wedding couples who come and go. Uh, so it transforms space. I think that, that that's sort of interesting. Yeah. And we believe in don't copy paste, but copy more. So do something one time, you're never sure if what you did was really what you wanted, but do it again, learn from it, update, evolve, and again, and again, and again. So don't copy paste, but copy morph. And we did that with June. Every time, every exhibition, we would you know, evolve the way it behaves in terms of software and sensors or the architectural setting. Um, a museum world woke up, eh? uh, finally, uh, modern 40 social exhibition about social technologies. Or here uh, we hacked the cathedral where the latest Harry Potter was recorded and placed a 13 meter strip of June um, in an old cathedral which is still being used. And you see the, the choir children here 
uh, screaming at it, uh, you have to believe in it or follow the light. So it's got this weird spiritual uh, element in it. Um, and uh, this is... Uh, Новейшие Moscow. компьютерные технологии как способ оживить современное искусство. В Москве открылась необычная no выставка, где saying, размыты границы между творцами и участниками. Там каждый может создавать неповторимые образы, нисколько не опасаясь за последствия. Они пищат и светятся, потому что все чувствуют. Современный голландский художник Дан Розагаарде, похоже, превратил пластиковые стебли, светодиоды, сенсоры и провода в живой организм, который реагирует не только на звук. Okay. Um, so... <laughs> that, that was June. Um, uh, to make a permanent version, eh? a permanent interaction. Here you see 60 meter June in Rotterdam in the Netherlands, bought by the city. And you can go there, eh? it's a three and a half hour flight. You can go to Amsterdam, take the train to Rotterdam and experience your interaction uh, of light there. And this is filmed as it is now. It's there for two and a half years already. Um, uh, from above, people interacting it with it. So there's this ghost of light which follows the people and become more or less dynamic uh, when you interact with it. So really trying to sort of merge nature and technology and people into one. Little cricket sounds in it. So here, sometimes it ignores you a bit and then it catches up and people are like, oh, it doesn't work anymore. And we're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> it, it, it tries to play with you. So that's it. Um, 60 meters, 60 watt. We're interested in merging nature and technology, making environments to use technology to make environments more human again. Eh? Maybe that's what we do. And also sustainability is a huge factor. You cannot talk about future and not include that. Eh? So we made it in such a way that 60 meter of June would only use 60 watts, eh? which is like half a light bulb. Um, uh, I think that's also the role of the artist and the designer of today, or the entrepreneur, to rethink what we want with future and to come up with proposals, but also with new inventions. One of these inventions that we did after June, eh, we copy more of our ideas also in different formats, is this project, Sustainable Dance Floor, in which we say we move away from art scene and we go to an area uh, club and try to you know, make our statement there. And what you see here is a floor which generates electricity when you dance on it. And uh, we teamed up with the Toyota people uh, to make a short movie. Toyota, a sponsors of green design. Every time we take a step, we leave energy behind. What if we could capture this energy as a clean source of electricity? Dutch architects, Dole, are developing the technology to capture the energy of dancers like these, then using it to power the club's music and lights. Certain materials produce electricity when squeezed. This is known as the piezo effect. So a dance floor can become one big generator, turning every movement into new power. In fact, any vibrations we make can generate electricity. Even the rattle of the tram taking you home at the end of the night. Green Design, sponsored by... Yes, Toyota. Um, uh, so we built the first one. You see it here, actually a sort of uh, harvesting uh, area, eh? like five centimeter thick, which is the same like what you have on your bicycle. Eh? So like sort of flat area and an interface tile, which exists out of LEDs and mirrors, um, producing between 20 and 25 watts uh, each tile. And the thing itself only asks for one watt, so we have a lot of power left for DJ booth, lighting, energy meter, etc. And also here we, we, you know, we, we made it a bit freaky, uh, this ghost of light, uh, which goes to the area where the most energy is produced. So people always try to dance eh, to get more electricity, so that they get the ghost, and you get this play of co-control, which is fascinating. Um, um, and so here, design, innovation, and in the end we teamed up with the people from Absolute Vodka to do a USA tour, and, and this is sort of traveling around. Yeah. I think the new artists, eh, in the future, we are all half priests, half salesmen, if we want to change the world. Yeah. Um, so this is one of my pet projects right now, my love baby project, uh, to copy more of that same principle to highways. Because I was sitting in the car in the Netherlands and realized that sort of uh, our roads, eh, they hack our landscape. Billions of dollars are spent on it, but nobody really thinks about them. Everybody spends time on the design of the car. 
So maybe, you know, do something different with that. And um, teaming up, this was the Dutch newspaper last week, uh, with one of the largest road manufacturers um, in Europe, top three, uh, teaming up with them to make the first smart highway, which is interactive but also sustainable. So thinking about getting electricity from grass eh, so that the roads, the lighting is, is energy neutral, or thinking about putting the light in the road itself, in the white stripes, so you don't need pillars anymore, or thinking about what else do we have? Oh, yeah, induction uh, areas in the road so you can charge your electrical car when you're driving, and thinking of placing piezo elements nearby stoplights so when you brake, you put pressure on the road, which normally disappears in heat and things like that, but then to produce electricity from that. Anyway, there's a lot of technology which is out there already, but it's not being used, it's not being applied. And I think that that, that, that is the role of, 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 of the future, to think about truly interactive and, and sustainable environment. I'm going to speed it up. A uh, lot of public artworks. Uh, crystal. I, I actually, I cannot even... I don't think I'm allowed to show this one, actually. But okay, it's in. So <laughs> little crystals which are charged wirelessly um, uh, on the ground. Eh? So lighting is, is in the ground. You can pick it up, you can play with it, you can write letters, you can take them home. Yeah? Um, this is a big project, Pillars of Light, in the entrance of a large cultural center here in Europe. Or these marbles, sort of rocks, uh, which are filled with light and sound, which change when you touch them. Hey, the children of today, they're not playing with marbles anymore, but they're MSNing, sitting behind a computer screen. So we thought, let's make things, you know, which drags them outside again. Yeah. Sometimes we work self-commissioned, uh, and sometimes we work commissioned. Eh? Sometimes you have clients, but usually clients always ask very boring questions. Eh? Like, can we have a June in color? Sorry, with all due respect. <laughs> I don't have... Yeah. Um, uh, so... <laughs> Um, uh, so can okay, we have June in color, which, is, which we can do, but it's boring. Uh, so let's do something different. And what you, the project that you see here is called Intimacy, where we said, okay, let's sort of focus on an area where technology is not really involved yet, but is about this idea of second skin. And um, let's go into fashion. And we didn't know anything about that in a way. So we teamed up with young fashion designers to make dresses interactive and to team up with a fashion uh, um, designer and a company which works with electronic paper, so to speak, which changes in transparency. And we started making dresses out of that. So here you see the model when she touches the dress breathes in transparency here, connected to the heartbeat. Opa, second skin. And the Whiskits were very happy to work on this project. Yeah, they are engineers. <laughs> Um, so this is intimacy white, from white to transparent with all the copper wires inside. This is black going from black to transparent. And right now we have a 2.0 which is actually out there for, for, for sale. Um, so we have crazy clients in Los Angeles wanting to wear it on the red carpet, uh, connected to their heartbeat or the, or the voice recognition of their boyfriend. Super nice of thinking about nature and technology, you know, uh, in, in, in a new way, in an innovative way. studio. <laughs> this is what I like to do. Besides giving lectures, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, uh, what, you, oh, what you see here is uh, we are fascinated with, um, uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> with interactive environments. Uh, so how can we make things move without using mechanism or a lot of material? And what you see here is lotus, a foil based out of different layers of mylar based on the heat of your breath. Uh, the 37 degrees folds open and we start making walls out of it which fold open like a flower. Um, this is the first artwork traveling around the world right now. So the light follows you. of nature and implement it into our environment.
So the tactile side of technology, I think we're, we're extremely interested in that. And right now, copy morphing it to a larger scale, uh, applying it to building facades, eh? how to think of architecture as a flower in a way, so that certain areas fold open different to the sun or the interaction inside. Beautiful, uh, yeah, insanely difficult, but beautiful uh, uh, project um, to make architecture more com connected to, 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 to nature and to, and to humans in the end. Yeah. To conclude, so we may live eh, in this over Facebook sized, over digitalized, over relationalized little world with our Facebook and our Amazon and all these kind of things. But I find it weird when we think about now and we think about future, that on one hand, our physical world is becoming more and more generic. The same old boring Louis Vuitton and Prada stores, eh, the shopping streets, they all start to look the same, especially in Europe. Or here, the, the cardboard stewardess in Tokyo airport, which scares the shit out of you at 2 o'clock at night, you know. Why don't you just put there a real person? So our, 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 our analog world is becoming more generic. It's becoming more the same. And it seems that our, physical, our emotions, we're more connecting it to a virtual cloud, eh? to Facebook and to Hive. That's where we share emotion, not so much physically anymore. And I think that's weird. We, we, we live in a state of schizophrenia, and it's a role, I think, of the artist or designer to reconnect, yes? To, to, to rethink and to come up with proposals. And technology can be good and bad. Eh? So technology can be bad, dominate George Orwell, camera, surveillance. But it can also be something good. Eh? Uh, Leonardo da Vinci, learn how to fly, cure diseases. It's a part of our imagination. And I think that's where the real magic in, is. Um, the next revolution, when we talk about future, is not so much a technological one, uh, where technology is jumping out of the computer screen and becomes part of our toilet seats, etc. But it's more an ideological one, where we think about what do we want from technology and what do we want from us. Yeah? Um, and to conclude, this, yeah, I just had to show you this one. This is a, um, a story I experienced in India not so long ago, uh, talking about merging nature and technology and, and this new world we're all going to live in, is a tiger, famous tiger in India, had children and they died during birth. And she got depressed, and the caretakers were very sad and thought that she would die, etc. cetera. Um, um, so what they did, they wrapped, they took five little piggies, and they wrapped the skin of the old uh, 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 puppets um, uh, into, uh, around them, uh, and suddenly the tiger accepted them as a child. And they live happily and ever after. I, I checked the online, they're, they're, they're not being eaten, especially this little piggy is very excited. And I think that's sort of interesting in the world that we live in today. We have to reconnect, we have to reinvent the relationship uh, to live happily ever after, to think about future landscape, which are about interactivity and about sustainability, and to think about technology, not something far away, but as an extension of, of, of our collective social skin, in a way. That's it. Yeah.